This Bible has a main theme. <coughs> when I say Bible, I mean King James Bible. Okay? It's not soul winning. Now, I'm all for soul winning. Amen. You guys know that. I mean, I'm, you know, we, right now we're at 200 people that accept the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Amen. Amen. Okay? Uh, praise the Lord. I'm all for soul winning. Now, but that's not the main theme of the Bible, because if you make that the main theme, then you make man the main theme. Mm -hmm. right. right. Okay. The main theme of the Bible is kings and kingdoms. kingdoms. Yeah. Who's in charge? Right. Who's in charge? Right. All right. You're going to learn some things <clears throat> about the fall. What happened to mankind? Where did Satan come from? Why does he hate Israel? Why does the devil hate Christians? You're going to learn a lot of things about this sons of God which you might not be aware of and how it falls into an important perspective in your life. Why do most scholars think that it's the godly line of Seth? Why do some people believe it's angels? We'll look at both arguments. Most importantly, has the devil blinded the minds of most men so we would not understand the truth about the subject? Is there something behind it? Does somebody not want you to know something about these sons of God? I mean, you'll. I mean, listen. You'll have. Well, I won't break fellowship whether or not you believe it's uh, the sons of God or angels or other believers. Men. Fair enough. I mean, I wouldn't break fellowship with it, but I'll tell you what. There's more behind it than you think there is. There's more involved in that than what you think there is. Not just a good study. Not just a good study. Bible believers must rightly divide. If you love the Bible, you have to rightly divide it. That's what we're talking about, the dispensations. Amen. Once I move off of this subject, once again, we'll continue with the dispensations. There are two kingdoms in the Bible that are dominant, that are absolutely dominant. Now, there are other physical kingdoms, but there are two that are the main ones. Number one is called the kingdom of heaven. Write this down for yourself for your own benefit. It's called the kingdom of heaven. Go to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. And we have to move quickly. I have a lot to cover. Okay. This is a literal, physical kingdom on the earth. The Davidic kingdom that was promised to Israel. It's called the kingdom of heaven. Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 8, verse 11. Arthur. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. Now that's a physical kingdom. Amen? It's the kingdom of heaven. Now the other kingdom is the kingdom of God. This is a spiritual kingdom. Look at Luke chapter 17. Luke chapter 17, verses 20 through 21. If you read most of the scholars, they will tell you they are the same thing. They are not the same thing. They are not even spelled the same. They are two different things. Matthew chapter 17. Well, you'll find, you'll find uh, parts in the Bible, well, well, in Matthew and sometimes in Mark, uh, that they will interchange the same scenario and use, uh, one will say the kingdom of heaven, one will say the kingdom of God. See, the point was that Jesus Christ could bring in both kingdoms. Amen. That's why. But we haven't gotten there yet. Be patient with me. But look at Luke chapter 17, verse 20 through 21. You tell me this is the same thing at which you just read in Matthew 8, 11. Uh, Carl. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is what? Within you. Within you. Luke chapter 17, verse 20 through 21. Now once again, the main theme of the Bible is not soul winning. I'll give you a little comparison here. You can get a concordance and look this stuff up. What I'm telling you is available to everybody in this room. The word kings is mentioned 334 times in your Bible. Kingdom, 342 times. Kingdoms, 57 times. Crown. Guess how many times? 66. How many Bibles you got? 166. Throne, 176 times. Compared to the word salvation, 164 times. Saved, 104 times. Born again, three times. Okay? Now once again, thank God for salvation. Yes, Jesus Christ died for my sins. Yes, I'm not downplaying that. Please don't misunderstand me, okay? Thank God someone took a Bible and showed me that I needed Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. I wouldn't be Amen. here today teaching the Bible if it wasn't for that. But that is not the main theme of the Bible. Okay? You have to understand that. Because uh, uh, 
soul winning, accepting Christ, that's milk. That's milk. And when you start getting into a subject that I'm getting into, it, it becomes more uh, strong meat, uh, the Bible right. would call it. Okay? Uh, there are four books in the Bible named after kings, okay, and so on. Now, to start our subject off, we have to go back a little bit. We're going to have to go back over here. We're going to have to go back to Genesis 1-1. Okay, now between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, there's what we call the gap. Most preachers, you mentioned the gap, they go bananas. They go completely off the hill. Okay, I'm going to prove to you tonight that the gap is not a fact, it's not a uh, theory, it's a fact. You miss so, listen, if you miss the gap, you miss quite a bit of your Bible, and I'll show that to you tonight. And uh, once again, this requires study. Uh, Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. Let's read the verses, and just to show you what you have there, there is a difference here. In Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. Stops. Then it goes. And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Water. All right. Now, once again, uh, I believe in the creation as a literal six days, 24-hour period, the recreation. Amen. Okay? It was, it was a thousand-year period. None of that nonsense. I believe when, when God recreated the earth, okay, here, Literal six days, 24-hour period. Okay, I believe that. I, the Bible says that. I believe what the Bible says. Amen. Now, in Genesis 1-1, it says that God created the heaven and the earth, right? All right, now, boom. This is where this is where it started. What happened when you get to Genesis 1-2, it's called the void. Something happened to the earth in Genesis 1-2. You look up the word darkness. Why would God create something in chaos? Look up the word darkness. It's always in a negative negative light. Listen, do you know why the earth is surrounded in a vacuum called space? It's dark. God doesn't want our sin to spread to the universe. He separates us from his heaven. You've got three heavens. You have the first heaven, which is the sky, the second heaven, which is outer space, and the third heaven where God dwells, right? right. And between the third heaven and the first heaven is darkness. Yes. The funny thing, it says Genesis 1 1, God created the heaven, singular, singular, and the earth. But now we have plural, three heavens. Right. So something did happen. Something did happen. Okay. All right. So we're going to look at some gap proofs. Some gap proofs. You say, well, what's this mean, preacher? I'm going to show you that the Bible will look at some things and say that the gap is real deal. Now, gap proof number one God would not create earth in a state of chaos. Look at Isaiah 45, 18. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 18. God's not going to say, well, here it is. We're just going to start from here. Uh, Lisa, could I get, do you remember, see-through glass, bouncy ball in the water? Did you find Same that here. somehow? See-through glass. 45, 18. Little I, I, ball. You need a bowl and a glass with right. water? Right, yeah, just to show you that. You know what I'm talking about, right? What yeah. I'm going to use for it? Okay, yeah. thank you. I should have got that before I apologize. Isaiah 45, 18. Who has it? Fuck it. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. So when God creates them, does he create something to be inhabited? Yes. Of course he does. But when you get Genesis 1, 2, you can't live there. Look what it says there. It says that the earth was without form and void. Why would God create something there? I mean, it's, the creation was in, was in Genesis 1-1. That was the, you said, well, what's the whole point? Be patient with me. Be patient with me. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. Gap proof number two. Go to 2 Peter chapter 3. A lot of Bible verses tonight. I told you this is, this is going to take some study. 2 Peter chapter 3. I'm leading you up to some place. Be patient. Does it work? Yeah, okay, that'll work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just put it over here, please. Thank you. Thank you. Second Peter chapter three. Uh, we'll read verse. Uh, yeah, well, we'll just go through. Uh, 
Start at verse 1, okay? <clears throat> Says this second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and the commandments of us, the apostles of our Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? In other words, you know, the Lord's been, you know, for 2,000 years, preachers have been telling words come back, words come back, and he hasn't come back yet. And a lot of people say, I thought the Lord was coming back. How come he hasn't come back yet? That's just scoffing us. For since the fathers fell asleep, now watch this, I'm going to read it and we're going to go back. All things continue as they were from the beginning of the, what's it say? Creation. Creation. Beginning of the creation. One. For this they willingly are ignorant of that the word of God, the heavens were of old, the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was then, then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Now, if you read that, most commentaries will tell you that's talking about Noah's flood. Yes. It is not Noah's flood. Yep. It doesn't line up with Scripture. Mm -hmm. It does not even come close to line up with Scripture. You say, well, how do you know that? Okay. Everybody look up here. It says in chapter five, in chapter 4, it says, from the beginning of... Creation. creation. That would be here somewhere, right? Yes. If it, Noah's flood was 1,700 years later, is that the beginning of creation? No, sir. No. That is not the beginning of creation. It's 1,700 years later. later. That's it. point number one. Let's read on. For this they willingly are ignorant of by the word of God, and the heavens were of what? Old. 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 And the earth was standing out of the water, and what? In the water. Listen. Is the earth in water right now? No. no. It's in atmosphere, right? It's in it's outer space. And, and, and uh, uh, Look at Job. I'll show you. Uh, Job 26, 7. Okay. This wasn't ours. A little ball there, right? Somebody read it for me, real quick. Go 26 7. Yep. He stretches out the north over the empty place and hangeth the earth upon nothing. Right? If we were to take a picture of the earth from the moon, you would see nothing. We'd just be hanging there, right? Mm -hmm. Right? right. That, that, that's, that's in the Bible, okay? All right, now, but in 2 Peter, it said that the earth was standing out of the water and what? In the in water. In the water. That's something. Well, this one. Oh, it didn't. Oh, didn't, didn't, didn't work. Work. Okay. I'm sorry. It's supposed to be. Uh, you want me to get another one? Well, you could, but I don't think you have enough time. But it's supposed to be something similar to this. Half in, half, half in, out. half out. Sorry. That's called the Great Deep. Okay. That is not how the Earth is. We are not in a pool of water. Okay. Look at your Bible, Genesis one two. What's it say? And the Earth was what? Without form and, and void. And void. That verse you read in 2 Peter is talking about the, the uh, Genesis 1-2. There were two floods. Two floods. Genesis 1-2. Then there's a flood here in Genesis chapter 6 with Noah. Let's read on. Well, yeah. Standing out of the water and in the water. Whereby the world that then, what's it say? Being overflowed. Was. No, we're in, we're in 6. We're here right now. Uh, right? What, what, then was. Being overflowed with water, what's it say? Perished. Perish. Perished. Now listen. It, in Noah, did everything perish? No. no. Noah didn't. Noah didn't. Noah and uh, seven people got out of there. Mm -hmm. In Genesis 1 2, everything was dead. Everything had perished. It was without form, it was void. In darkness. But the, and the, and, but the heavens and the earth, which are? <coughs> now. 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 Now you go to verse 10. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also works that are therein shall be burnt up. That's future. You have the past, you have the present, and you have the future. Right there on, on the state of the earth. Okay? So in Genesis 1.1, you have the actual creation. Something was on the earth. Something was there prior to man. Something happened. 
Something happened so catalytic, so uh, dramatic, that it put the earth into a state of, of nothingness. Something happened. We're going to find out what that is. <coughs> if there is no gap, where do you put the fall of Satan? Because he just shows up in Genesis chapter 3. Where do you put the fall? Yeah, you have Isaiah, but where do you put the fall? You have Ezekiel, yeah, but where do you put the fall? Mm -hmm. You got a problem. Yeah. I'll tell you where you put the fall. Here, he's doing fine. He gets cast out. Jesus Christ said to Luke, he said, I beheld Satan as lightning. He cast him out. Genesis yeah, this right here, when the, he, he, that, that, just set the, that just set the world crazy. It, it destroyed the world. And I'm going to give you some verses as we move on. Uh, look, at, look at Job chapter 38. Satan fell between Genesis 1-1 one, one and Genesis 1-2. Job 38. Job 38. 38. Look at verses 6 and 7. We're just going to look at verses 6 and 7. Job 38. Now we're talking about the sons of God. Who are they? Why are they so important? Does it really matter? Yeah. Of course it does. Someone read verse 6 and 7 for me. Shut. <clears throat> Where are the foundations thereof uh, fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Now wait a minute. This is talking about from the foundation of the what? Our world. world. When was man created? What day? Uh, Sixth six day. Six day. This is before the foundation of the world even existed. And it said the sons of what? God. God. Were shouting. Oh, angels, yeah. Of course. Sons of God. Nobody was created. No man wasn't created yet. That's right, yeah. This is before the foundation. Here's what happened. Lucifer, in the Genesis 1-1, that world there was inhabited by angels. angels. You just read the verse that showed you that. Yep. Okay? God had another creation prior to us. Okay? And you say, well, what's the big deal? Who reigned over them? Lucifer was their king. We're going to look at that in a few minutes. Look at Psalm 82.5. When Satan fell, it destroyed the earth. You know that the earth is on an axis, right? It's tilted. You guys know that, right? Yeah, it is. Well, there's why. You're going to find out why right now. In Psalms 82.5. You got it, yeah. Psalms 82.5. Who's got it? Bucky. They knew not, neither will they understand. They walk on it in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Okay, when did it happen? It happened on Genesis, between Genesis 1.1 1, 1 and 1.2, 1, when the devil was cast out. Okay, and that's, the, that's why the earth is, uh, is, is, is off course there. Um... <clears throat> Also, just, just another proof here. When we get to the when we get to Adam, now there was a tree of knowledge of good and what? Evil. 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 Now think about that. Evil showing up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where did evil come from? That should throw a flag up anyway. Mm. Mm. Right? Yeah. I mean that tree is connected and then Ezekiel, I forgot the, the, the verse, that's connected with Lucifer. That tree. But yet it shows up. In a garden that is completely perfect. Ezekiel 28. Right, yes. Ezekiel 28. Yes. Okay, uh, but here, but that's another point to show you that things, something had gone astray. Okay, right. just another proof there. All right. Okay, I should at least give you a red flag. Some arguments of the, uh, of the people that prove that uh, the sons of God in the Old Testament are not angels. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna cover that in a few minutes. All right, but I want you to go to uh, Isaiah 14:13. Isaiah. Satan was in charge of these angelic beings. Isaiah 13, 14, 14, 14. He was he was the cherub. 14, 14. A lot of people think Satan's an angel. He's not an angel. He's a cherub. Fourteen thirteen. Not a, uh, yeah, cherub. Yes, he's a cherub. Well, we're very passionate. <coughs> Isaiah fourteen thirteen. That's where we'll start. Isaiah thirteen. 14. Watch your thirteen. Isaiah fourteen thirteen. Huh? Twelve. Go to twelve. twelve. Go ahead. Start with twelve. Go ahead. Wait. Okay. 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 How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above Stop. Us. I will exalt my what? 
throne. throne. Satan had a throne. He was in charge of those angelic beings on the earth. That was God's first creation. And he wanted to be like God, so God ends up, of course, casting him out. Right. Okay, and then he destroys the earth. You know about the dinosaurs, right? The dinosaurs? <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go to Hovind and the other guys, they say, well, the dinosaurs were on the ark. And when they got off the ark uh, over here, then God destroyed the dinosaurs. That's what I call the dumb God theory. Mm -hmm. okay. Why would God take the dinosaurs, whether they were egg form or whatever, whatever form, Get them on the ark to save them from the flood and then kill them as soon as they got off. Right. It makes no sense. Makes no sense. Yeah, but, but, if you put the dinosaurs here in Genesis 1 1 with the angelic creation, mm. that would be interesting. And there was a flood. Because in the water and out of the water, God destroys the earth. This is where the dinosaurs were. Yeah. yeah. Okay? This is, this is the only place you could put them that makes <coughs> any sense was with this angelic <coughs> being, beings. And Satan ruled over them. Okay? Wow. Uh, now, he had a throne. Continue to read on, please. <clears throat> 13. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Mm. Yet thou shalt be brought <laughs> down to hell to the sides of the pit. Okay? Now, he wanted to be like God. See, well, what was his fault? What caused him to do that? His pride. Mm -hmm. He loved himself. Mike, where's Mike? He's upstairs, upstairs by looking in the mirror at himself. Yeah. <laughs> <Or I'm> <laughs> <laughs> loved himself. Look at, look at Ezekiel 28. 28, 16. I got it written down, yeah. <clears throat> he only got his Ezekiel 28? Yeah, start, and, uh, start verse 14. Just give me a read. Go ahead. Are the multitude of the merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub. Stop. Now he's a covering what? Cherub. Cherub, cherub. cherub. not an angel. He, the Bible says he can appear as an angel of right. light. So, yep. Didn't say he was an angel. Read your Bible. Also, guess who was the first person to sin? Yeah. Lucifer. 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 It just said it wasn't Adam. Right. Look at read it again, brother. Read that verse again. Look what you just read. He was the first person to sin. Start over again, please. By the multitude of the mer of thy merchandise, that I have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee. O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, that thee may behold thee, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By the, by the iniquity of thy traffic, therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. I shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth, in the sight of all them that behold thee. Okay. Now, of course, we have some Second Advent passages in there as well as you can see that, okay, because the devil's not destroyed. But you yeah. understand, because of pride, he wanted to be like God. Yeah. All right, uh, God cast him out, yep. and that's the only place you can put him. Where did he fall? We know he, we know how he fell. Okay, we we just, we just read that. We know he had a pride issue. Thought he was right. beautiful, right? Yep. But the problem is you don't know where to put him because if you put him in, if you put him in the garden, how'd that happen? Does it make right. any sense? The only place it makes sense is because in Genesis one two something happened. Yeah. Remember, when Adam sinned, was not the earth cursed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The ground is cursed now because of Adam. Right. So what do you think when, when his angelic, his first creation, Satan, do you think it wouldn't ups, upset the earth? Of course it did. Yeah. And that's what Genesis 1-2 is. It's called the void. He fell there. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning when he fell. Okay? He, was, he wanted to be like God. He wanted to kill God. And a third of the angels were with him. And this, there was an angelic, uh, once again, 
world. This is the first world. It was run by Lucifer and the sons of God. Everybody with me so yeah. far? Everybody mm -hmm. see that? That's the first Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. That's where you're at. He's running. The, I don't think it could have been thousands of years. I don't know how many years it could have been. I, I don't know. But this is where he ruled. He rises up against God. God casts him out. Woo! The earth is full of water at that point. Listen, think about this. Think about this. This is a little, this little sidetrack here. What is your body mostly made up of? Water. water. Right? Water. <coughs> mostly water. 98%. Right? 98% like that. I don't yeah. know what it is, but it's mostly made up of water. Okay? <coughs> now here's the thing. Where do demonic spirits like to dwell in? Moist. 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 Water. Dark places. Warm. Right? Yeah. They love, that's why they, they dwell on your body. Why? Because they like water. Yeah. Hmm. When, when Satan cast out the pigs, cast mm -hmm. out the demons into the pigs, where did they run into? Into the water. Water. water into yeah. the ocean. Drown. Something about they have an affinity with water. Yeah. Hey, maybe, hey, listen, you know the two places people like to be the most? The yeah. two main this places is. people like to be the most. Think about it. Yeah. It's cold outside, ladies, and the snow's coming down, and then there's a little log fire. Mm -hmm. Right? Come on, everybody likes to be yeah. in front of the fireplace, right? Yeah. yeah. Sit down, relax, right? Now, in the summertime, people love to be on the beach. Water. Water, yeah. Right? Maybe somebody's getting you ready for a lake of fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh -huh. Think about it, yeah. <coughs> Just throwing it out there. Uh -huh. Everybody with me? So, real quick recap. Genesis 1-1, Lucifer and the sons of God. Yeah. We're still dealing with the sons of God. Who are they? But you're getting a picture now to see that they are who? Angels. 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 Okay, we're going to go over some of the arguments to help you a little bit. All right? Now, <clears throat> some arguments that people uh, use to prove that the sons of God in the Old Testament are not angels. There's their argument. They'll say, we don't believe that. We don't believe they're angels. We believe that they're in a godly line of Seth. They'll say, number one, if you have a Schofield Bible, he says this, angels are sexless. What? Never says that in the Bible. Never, no, never. Never says angels are sexless. They're all males. Right. There are no female angels in the Bible. No. And they do not have wings. No. No, they have no wings. Okay, and I'll get that in a few minutes. They'll say, they'll go, here's their verse. Go to Matthew chapter 22. They'll take this verse and they'll use this to show you that, you know, uh, the angels aren't the ones in Genesis chapter 6. You say, preacher, why is that so important? Be patient. I'm going to take you somewhere. I'm going to promise you, by the end of this, you're going to say, wow, I never saw that before. Yeah. Okay? Just be patient. i got to give you a foundation. I have to build the house. can't just, you know, put the roof on. There's no foundation. Right, sink, right. Okay? Now, this is their argument. They will go to Matthew chapter 22. Somebody read verses 29 through 30. This is their argument. Brother Arthur. Jesus answered and said unto them, Ye do err, not knowing the Scriptures, nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Okay, so their argument is this. They'll say, look, at right there it says, for the resurrection they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of God in heaven. Well, let's take a step back. Number one, these angels came down on earth, not in heaven. Amen. Number two, number two, angels don't have to procreate because they're eternal. That's right. right. Number three, they're neither given in marriage because they're all males. Yep. Yeah. Males don't marry, unless, of course, you live in America. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're right. Right? Mm -hmm. So that argument's out the door. Okay? That argument's out the door. Um, angels appear as men. Okay? Now I'm going to give you uh, some verses to write down, but we're not going to look at them all. All right? You can write these down. Uh, Judges 13, 2 through 21. Okay? <clears throat> Angels appear as men. Numbers 22. Numbers 22. 22 through 25. Once again, you're going to have to do some study. 22 through 25? Yep. Genesis 16, 28. Genesis 16, 28. And 1 Chronicles 21, 16. 1 Chronicles 21, 16? Yes. Okay. But I want you to go to Hebrews 13, too. Numbers 22, 25? Yes, 22, tw Numbers 22, 22 through 25. I'm sorry, it was 1 Chronicles 21? 1 Chronicles 21, 16. 16. Please go to Hebrews 13, 2 now. Like I said, we have to move. 21, 16. First Hebrew. Okay. Hebrew. 
Hebrews 13 2. Hebrews 13 2. Okay, who's got it? Someone we have to read us more quickly. Chuck? Alright. Remember them that are in bonds as bu as bound with them. Two. 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 Oh, oh sorry, sorry, sorry. Be not forgetful to enter entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. They've entertained Ooh. what unaware? Angels. angels. Now if a guy showed up with wings at your house, what would you know? <laughs> this ain't no normal dude, right? Yeah. So they entertain angels unaware. They don't realize it's an angel because it looks like a man. And those verses will uh, also show you what I mean by that. Now the only time you see a woman with wings in the Bible, it's satanic. Mm -hmm. Look at Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 5. Zechariah. <clears throat> there are no women angels. Angels don't have wings. Okay? Zechariah 5. Sorry, Virginia. There is no Santa Claus. In Zechariah chapter 5, look at verses 7 through 9. This is the only time you'll see a woman with wings, and it's satanic. Zechariah 5. Zechariah chapter 5, verses 7 through 9. Arthur. And behold, there was lifted up a talent of lead, and this is a woman that sitteth in the midst of the ephah. And he said, This is wickedness. And he cast it into the midst of the ephah, and he cast the weight of lead upon the mouth thereof. Then lifted I up mine eyes, and looked, and behold, there came out two women. <coughs> and the wind was in their wings, for they had wings like the wings of a stork. And they lifted up the ephah between the earth and the heaven. Okay? And it's wickedness. Okay? It's wickedness. Like right. five, seven through nine. Wing, wings, wickedness. The argument number three. And the Schofield Bible, and I like Schofield. Schofield was a dispensationalist. If you have a Schofield Bible, you have a good Bible. I'm not being too critical here. The old Schofield. Old, yeah, the not old the new Schofield. One, man. Yeah, not the new one, the old Schofield. Schofield calls the sons of God in Genesis 6 the godly line of Seth. That's not right. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, there is no such thing as a godly line. No, no such animal. There's a messianic line. Mm -hmm. There's a kingly line. Right. But there is no such thing as a godly line. Okay, uh, I want to prove, look, at, look at Genesis 5.3. Who was Adam made in the image of? God. God. Now we're going to start rolling here. Okay, now we're going to start rolling. Adam was made in the image of who? God. 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 What happened when he sinned? He fell. He fell. He lost that what? Image. He image. lost the image of God. He lost that image. Adam had two kingdoms. Adam had two kingdoms. He had the kingdom of God. Yeah. He had God's image. Right. He had the kingdom of heaven. God told him to have domain, right? right? He was the king. When he fell, he lost both kingdoms. Mm -hmm. Yep. We'll get to there. Be patient. Just wanted to give you a quick, quick recap. Okay? Look at Genesis 5.3. Someone read it. We have to move quickly. Please, yep. start reading. And Adam lived in 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Okay, so who was his sons in his image made of? Adam. Adam, 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 not in God's image. Right. It was lost. Amen. It was lost. He lost okay. Him. Now every unsaved man is in the image of Adam. Adam. That's the image you have. Look at Romans chapter five. I'll give you, I'll give you Romans five twelve. Five twelve. Yep. Yeah. Every unsaved man is in the image of Adam. Only one person can restore that image of God. And guess who that is? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. But everybody at one time, you had the image of Adam. Look at uh, Romans 5.12. Carl, quickly. All right, somebody else. Carl doesn't have it. I have to move. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Okay, there you go, right? So all have sinned. Unfortunately, we're in a boat. Adam blew it, and it's passed upon all men. Right. We weren't there when it happened. Okay, but unfortunately it happens. Now, to get that image back, go to Hebrews 1.3. Hebrews 1 3. Hebrews you got to be saved. Amen. <clears throat> Hebrews 1 3. Hebrews 1 3. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Read it. Who being the brightness of his glory, and express the image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. The express what? 
Image. 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 Look at 2 Corinthians 4.4. 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. So that express image means that we've retaken on the image of God? Right, yep. You'll see it real clearly in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. <laughs> David. Whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Yes. Who is the image of who? God. God. So if I'm in Christ, whose image do I have? God. God's image. Right. Okay? So Adam had a problem. He yeah. lost God's image. image right. Okay? Every man is made in, in the image of Adam. 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 Okay? Which is a sinful nature. 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 Okay? So, but get that nature back to get us back where we have to go. Okay? Because Adam had both. He had both kingdoms. He blew it. Mm -hmm. The only person that could bring in both kingdoms, guess who? Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ, because he was the only one that could restore us. There is no new birth in the Old Testament. All right. Right. Amen. Once Adam lost it here, the kingdom of God is not even present. No. Look at 1 Peter 1, 1 3. You did no new birth in the Old Testament. You can't get born again in the Old Testament. No. Jesus Christ hadn't died. He hasn't resurrected. 1 Peter 1 3. Someone read it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. So, what's our lively hope? The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Jesus Christ hadn't died here. Okay, but Schofield says it's a godly line. Adam lost that godly line. He took on the image of a sinner. Right. I'll prove it to you in a minute. We'll go a little bit deeper. Take your Bibles, just to give you a little bit more. Go to Matthew chapter 1. Let's look at the lineage here of this godly line. Genesis chapter 6 has nothing to do with a godly line. Genesis, uh, Matthew chapter uh, 1. Six. Matthew 1. Go to Matthew 1. Oh, Matthew 1 now? Yeah, we guys, we hope you'll be in Genesis 6 in a minute. Matthew chapter 1. <coughs> verses 5 through 6. Arthur. And Simon begat Bo uh, Bo Booz of Rachel. And Booz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse. And Jesse begat David the king, and David the king begat Solomon, of her that had been the wife of Urias. And Solomon begat Roboam, and Roboam begat Abia, and Abia begat Asa. And Asa begat Jehot Josaphat, and Josaphat begat Joram, and Joram begat Ozias. And Ozias begat Joatham, and Joatham begat Achaz, and Achaz became Azekias. And it goes on and on and on and on. Okay, this is the lineage for Christ. Right. Okay, now watch this. In Matthew 1 5, Rahab, professional prostitute. Right. Mm -hmm. Ruth, a Moabite, yep. Gentile. David, adulterer, murderer, verse 6. Yep. Solomon, idolater, threw his kids to Moloch. That's a, that's a godly line, it's a messianic line. Yeah. It's a kingly line. But ain't nothing godly about those group of people. Right. No. Okay? So Genesis 6 has nothing to do... In other words, they're saying these are... I, this, I hate to say it like this, but this is what they mean by this. Uh, the, the women are lost people. <coughs> and, the, and, the, and, the, and Seth, the, the, you know, the sons of God, those were the, those were the saved men. That's what they wow. teach in the fundamental circles. Wow. Wow. That's basically what it comes down to. Saved and lost people. Wow. And that's ridiculous as you read it in the text but that's what's taught okay but i think i'm giving you enough points here to keep moving right, right you start right. to see this here um go to genesis chapter three i mean look what happens here i mean a little bible reading will save you a lot of headache yep Matthew chapter 3. Now we're going to go back to the fall, the origins of sin on the earth. Matthew, okay? Genesis. 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 Genesis three. chapter 3. three. Mm -hmm. now, we're, now we're here right now, okay? We've kind of moved a little bit. Uh, we're just, we're, I just want to show you some things here, okay? We're at the restored earth. Genesis chapter 3. Let's read it. Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast in the field, which the Lord God had made. Now isn't it crazy how, how the Bible is just so perfect? Now the serpent, which was more subtle than any beast. Well, as far as I know, a serpent isn't a beast, it's a what? Reptile. Reptile. But as you read scripture, listen, you ever you ever see a satanic symbol? Yes. What's in the middle of it? A goat. A goat. A goat. Right. We'll all, get to that in a few minutes. That. Right. All that stuff. And, and wow. We'll see that. All right. The Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, 
Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest right. ye die. Now, God never said that. He never said yeah. she couldn't touch it. Right. She could have kicked it around like a soccer ball. He said, Don't eat of it. Right. But once again, she's adding to God's word. Mm -hmm. And of course, you have the devil here who's telling her, you know, Yea, hath God said, Did he really mean that? Okay. Verse 4, And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. <laughs> For God doth know in the day, watch this, ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and they were, and ye shall be as, what's it say? God. God. Didn't say ye shall be as God, like God. Ye shall be as God. God. God's. Now watch, knowing good and evil. And when a woman saw that the tree was good for food and so on and so forth, the pleasant the eye and all that, right? She wasn't shocked by that. You know why? Because she knew the sons of God were present at that time. Yeah. They were angelic beings. Yep. The, what the devil was saying, do you want to be like me and my boys? You can be like us, gods. We are the son of God. Yes. Talk about positive thinking. <laughs> yeah, positive thinking. You want to be like us? You know. Uh, where, where's the first place the devil shows up? Under the tree of knowledge, good and evil. What's yeah. that tell you? Yes. Tree of knowledge, right? Yep. Go to colleges. What do you get? You talk that in your Bible. That, that, that's not what God meant. You, you came from an ape. Hmm. You know, so on and so forth. Yep. Okay? Now, look at Job 38. Let's go back to Job 38. I'm just giving you the thing here. We're going to go right to verse 1 now. Job chapter 38. So the sons of God were around when Adam and Eve were there. They knew about it. They weren't shocked about it. Was it nothing that, you know, that took them by surprise? Matter of fact, they saw them. They wanted to be like them. Or at least Eve did. Now, 38, we'll start in verse 1. Uh, what if, I'm in Psalms. I'm in the wrong book here. I got to get to uh, Job. Excuse me. One, two. Well, yeah, I'm going to start in uh, verse one. Job 38, verse one. The Lord answered Job. This is the first time He answers him. Out of the whirlwind, and said, "Who is it that darkness counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up now that loins like a man, for I will demand of thee an answer thou me. Now watch verse four. Where was thou when I laid the foundation of the what? Earth. Earth. The foundation of the earth. Declare it if thou hast understanding. Who laid the measure thereof? So the earth is measured. If thou knowest, or who has stretched a line upon it? You know what a line is for, right? Did you ever stretch a line? Make it look straight, whatever it is, right? Here it is. He's talking about the creation. <coughs> who hath made letter? If thou knowest, or who that stretched a line upon it? Verse 6. Whereupon are the foundations therefore fastened? Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? So what that tells you is something is holding the earth up. It's fastened to something. That's what my Bible says. That's what I believe. And there's corners in the earth. Somehow there's inside the earth, there's some kind of corners. I'm just telling you what the Bible says. You don't have to believe it. Who shut up the sea with the doors? Watch it. Who shut the sea with the doors when it broke forth as if the hand issued out of the womb? Genesis 1, 2. Yeah. In the water and out of the water. Okay. When I made the cloud, the garment thereof, the thick darkness, and swaddling band for it, and broke it up for the decreed place, and set bars and doors, and said, Hitherto thou shalt come up no further, and here shall thy uh, proud ways be stayed. Hast thou commanded the morning since thy days, and caused the day spring to know his place, that it might take hold of the ends of the earth, that the wicked might be shaken out of it, it is turned as clay to the, to the seal, and they stand as a garment. God is liking the universe to a garment. That's a different study. And from the wicked their light is withholden, and, uh, and uh, the high arm shall be broken. Hast thou entered into the springs of the sea, or hast thou walked in the search of the depths? Have the gates of death been opened unto thee, or hast thou seen the door of the shadow of death? Hast thou perceived the breath of the earth? Declare, and he's talking about the creation. You see that, right? He's yeah. very clear. Now watch this. Where is the way... Uh, where is the way where light dwelleth? As for darkness, uh, where is the place thereof? And he goes on and on and on and on. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but verse 7 says, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God, what? Shouted, Shouted for, for joy. joy. Angels, That's yeah. here, ladies and gentlemen. That's here. Genesis, yep. You see that? I mean, does everybody not see that? I mean, this is uh, the foundation of the earth. Man was it not made until the sixth day. Right. Yep. That's over here. Okay? 
That doesn't make any sense. The sons of God. Now you say, well, Adam was a son of God. Yes, he was. He was created. He didn't have a mommy and daddy. That's right. He was a son of God. He was created in God's image. So he was a created being as well. You're not created. Okay? Look at Job. Okay? This is one of my arguments since we're there. Job chapter 1. Job 1. Now it talks about Job. He was a righteous man. Okay? And in verse 6, okay? Verse 6, now there was a day when the sons of God came present, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Everybody see that? Yes. Now if the sons of God, now wait, if the sons of God are people, right? They're good people. Number one, why isn't Job there? Yeah. He's the most righteous man on the earth. Why is he not there? Right. Yeah. Number two, what's Satan doing there? Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, what's Satan doing there? <coughs> I'll tell you why Satan's there, because the sons of God are angels. Yeah. And Satan's a created being. He's there. That's why Job is not there. Job didn't have a clue what was happening, the stuff that was happening to him. He was the most righteous man on the earth. And of like 19 million people, God could only find one man. Why wasn't he present at this meeting? Because he wasn't a created being. Okay? Look at uh, 2, verse 1 as well. It says the same thing. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the what? Lord. Okay, once again, the devil, sons of God are angels. 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 Okay, the devil, of course, is a cherubim, but you, you get that. We're talking about the sons of God. All right? I mean, hence the term sons of God. Now, they'll tell me when you get Genesis chapter 6, they'll say this. You mean to tell me, preacher, that you're telling me that angels came down and had sex, procreated, with, uh, with uh, human women? Yes. yes. That's exactly what I'm telling you. And we're going to look at the text in a minute. It's not too far-fetched. Go to Genesis chapter 19. It almost happened again. Genesis, Genesis 19. chapter 19. You see, preacher, while this information, be patient. I'm building you up to something. Okay, if you don't shout at the end of this, you're all dead. Okay, you need to check your pulse. Okay, I'm not I'm not done. okay? look at Genesis 19. Uh, let me get there because I'm going to do a little bit of reading here. Uh, Genesis 19, we'll start in verse 1 here. Okay, and there was, uh, and there came two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing there, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. So who's there? Lot and who? Two angels. Two angels. Two angels. Where are they at? In Sodom. Sodom. Not a good place to be. And he said, Behold, now thy Lord, turn and I pray you into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your way. And they said, Nay, but we shall abide in the street all night. <laughs> and he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned and unto him, and entered into his house. And he made them a feast, and did bake on them a bread, and they did eat. Okay, now you notice these angels can eat, they can take on the form of a man. Okay, I know they're ministering spirits in Hebrews, but they can take on the form of a man. Verse 4, but before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house. Round about, old and young, and all the people come from every quarter. And they called unto Lot, and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us, that we may know them. Know them. And that ain't talking about let's get to shake their hands. They wanted yeah. to have sex with them. You say, well, I don't believe that. Read on. It said, and I said, and, and, and said, pray ye, brethren, do not so wickedly. Yep. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye unto them as is good in your own eyes. Yep. Listen, he's trying to help these two guys. He's willing to put out his own daughters out there to a bunch of sex perverts. Oh, yep. Okay? Because these people didn't want to shake hands. They wanted to have sex with them. Sex yep. with these two angels. Yep. Okay? So it's not too far-fetched when we get to Genesis chapter 6 where these angels came down and procreated. Now, we're not done yet. But everybody see that picture there? Yeah. You can definitely see it there, okay? Um, also, um, listen, it's going to happen again. In, in the tribulation, in the tribulation, I gotta, I'm not going to go through all the verses. Look at Daniel 2.43. Look at Daniel 2.43. These angels are going to come down again one day and want to procreate with women. Look at Daniel 2.43. 
You say, preacher, what's all this mean? You'll see them. Just give me patient. Be patient. Daniel 2.43. Got it. Uh, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Okay? You look up the word iron. It deals with giants. Okay? I'm not going to go through all the verses. Clay. Guess where man came from? Dirt. Dirt the the dirt. Does it not talk about a seed there? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay? Amen? So there, there, there's, there's going to be a mixing that's going on there. And you read in Daniel, and so on. look at Daniel uh, 3.11. Look at Daniel 3.11. Okay, it talks about iron. Look, look what it's dealing with. Look what it's really dealing with. Uh, 311? Yes. Uh, and whoso falleth, uh, falleth not down and worshipeth, but that he... No, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 311. I apologize. Deuteronomy, my fault. 311. Okay. I apologize. Sorry. Deuteronomy 311. Deuteronomy 311. I'm, I'm sorry, my fault. You've got a lot of verses in front of me and it's just trying to keep track. For only Og, king of Bashan, remained, remained, remained of the remnants of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it, is it not in Rabbath of the children of Ammon? Nine cubits was the length thereof, and the cubits and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubits of a man. And it talks about the ten toes being the ten kings, Daniel 7-7, seven, seven, and so right. forth. It's dealing with these angels that are going to come down, in the future, once again, and mingle with that seed, which is wow. the, which is the seed of man. That's in the future. <laughs> yep. A lot of stuff to be going down in the tribulation. Yes, sir. It's also interesting how in Daniel two it says, "And they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men." Men. Who are the they? Who are the they? Yeah. Okay. All yeah. right. So you see that there. So it's not too far fetched. Go back to Genesis chapter six now. Let's read the thing in the context Genesis in light of what we know so far. Would that be a fair? Have I helped you so far? Have you seen certain things? Okay. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. You look like you're all sleeping. And I'm no. All right. Now let's start from Genesis six. Let's read it in the context of angels. Now, okay, the way it should be read. What verse. Verse one. All right. And it came to pass that when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. That's the human race. Right. Verse 2. The sons of God. Who is that now? Angels. 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 Saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives for all which they chose. Yeah. And the Lord said, My spirit shall always strive with man, for he is also flesh, and his day shall be 120 years. Now watch this. Verse 4. There were also, there were giants in the earth in those days. Watch it. And also after that, when the sons of God Angels. came into the daughters of men. Oh. That ungodly <laughs> union produced giants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see that? Listen, a saved person and an unsaved person, that happens all the time. They get married. They have children. They don't have giants. No. <laughs> right? Right. right? Right? Okay? Amen. This was something different. This was something different. Something was wrong here. And it produced this offspring that was not right. You see that, right? Right? I mean, yeah, right. let's look at it here. Okay, and they bear un daughters of men, and they bear children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. That means they were evil, they were vicious. Okay, verse 5, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and every imagination of the thoughts of their heart was only evil continually. And repent the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved his heart. Now watch verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Now watch both man, beast, and what? Creepy, Creepy thing. thing. Now, the animals were also destroyed. Okay? There are only two reasons why God would kill an animal. Only two reasons. Yep. Eat okay, seconds. number one, number one, not, at this point, they're not eating meat. Only. No, not yet. They're not eating meat. That doesn't happen in Genesis chapter 9. There's no meat. Animals aren't carnivorous at this particular point either. Eat great. Okay? Mm -hmm. Two reasons. Exactly. God kills a man. Number one, number one, if an animal kills another human, they have to go down. Number two, bestiality. Okay, you know what bestiality is, right? I don't have to get all kinds of graphic, okay? It's yeah. having sex with an animal. <laughs> Only two reasons. Like, look, I'll give you a look at, look at uh, Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. Now, if an animal killed a man, that's next is chapter 21, the animal had to be put down, okay? But we're not going to look at that for time's sake. But if there was a, a reunion, a union with an animal and a human, mm -hmm. uh, they were both put down. 
Uh, Leviticus chapter 20, look at verses 15 through 16. Okay, yep. Leviticus chapter 20, I got line, verse yep. 15 through 16. Bucky? And if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. And if a woman approach unto any beast, and lie down thereto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death, their blood shall be upon them. Okay, everybody got that so far? Yeah. So not only were the angels procreating with women, yeah. there was something going on with the animals. Yeah. Take your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 34, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Now listen, you want to go to a Greek lexicon, you want to bust out with the Hebrew, you can knock yourself out, buddy. I read the King James Bible as it stands. Amen. Amen. Okay, because I'm not in a position to correct God's Word. Amen. You can go all the lexicons you want, there's, there's 28 of them, you pick which one to fit your fancy. Wow. Okay, my final authority is the Word of God. Amen. Okay, Exodus. look at Isaiah 34, 14. Whoa. Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 14. Who has it? Who has <laughs> Isaiah? All right, brother. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island, and the satyr shall cry to his fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there, and find for herself a place of rest. Anybody know what a satyr is? A good up man. Half goat, half yes. man. Wow. New Bibles change it to jackal because, of course, there could be no such thing as a satyr. That was just them trying to imply something. Well, let me tell you something. My King James Bible says that there were satyrs. Half man, half goat. You say, where do you get that? Genesis chapter 6. Revelation chapter 9. Go to Revelation chapter 9. Look at what comes out of the earth. Okay? Look what comes out of the earth. Revelation chapter 9. I've heard preachers say uh, those things that come out of the earth in Revelation chapter 9 are helicopters. Mm -hmm. no, uh, no, I kid yeah. you not, man. No, you no, just no, come, you come a on. Perfect yeah. description of what it is. Yeah. All right. right. Now look at it. Uh, no. Verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. Now who do you think the star is? Lucifer. Of course. Lucifer. And, and it was given to the key of the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit, and there rose a smoke out of the pit. And smoke a great furnace, and the sun of the air were darkened by the reason the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. Now, that doesn't sound too crazy, right? But let's read on. We're given power as the scorpions of the earth have. And it was commanded that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And it was given to them that they should not kill, but they should uh, be tormented five months. Five's number of death. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion. Yep. When he striketh them, and in those days shall men shall seek death and shall not find it. He shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. Now watch this, verse 7. And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses, yeah. prepared unto battle. And on their heads were as if they were crowns, like gold. And their faces were the faces of what? Men. Men. Hey, Genesis chapter 6 also said the creeping thing. Ooh. Right, right. Yep, it is. Ooh. And they had hair as the hair of what? Women. Women. Mm -hmm. And their teeth were as the teeth of what? Lions. Welcome to Genesis chapter 6 again. Yep. Whatever happened in Genesis chapter 6, it, it survived. And after that. I was going to say, so it's preserved now underground? Yeah, absolutely. The There's something start. there. There's something there. I mean, hey, listen, I'm not dying. I'm not going to hell. I'm not thinking of these, these, these monsters. Whoa, yeah. Thank God. Okay? You see what I'm saying here? You start missing verses? What do you, I mean, yeah, you've got to call that a helicopter. <laughs> hey, Pat, you don't know where to come from. You know UFOs and all that other nonsense? Listen, there ain't no such thing as an identified flying object coming from Mars or the planet Xeon. The Bible says Eve is the mother of all living. So whatever is up there came from here first. Amen. Genesis chapter 6. Something <laughs> wicked happened in those times. So How can a helicopter torment a man from Listen, <laughs> I've heard because they don't read it as it stands. Now, look, look at verse 10. Go ahead, bud. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. I think if, uh, it is. if the tail of a helicopter hit a man, he wouldn't be around. It wouldn't be around. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, okay, so, so my King James Bible says Seder. It only says it one time. I believe it stems back to Genesis chapter 6, you Revelation chapter 9. You've got to line this scripture up somewhere. Here's another one. Look at your Bibles at Psalms 92.10. That's, that's Napalm. From the helicopters. Right. Huh? Napalm from the helicopters. Uh, you can believe that if you want, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Psalms 9210. 
Yeah. I think, I mean, I mean, I know that the writers at this time didn't know what a helicopter was, but I'm sure they could give a description of something that flew. Right. Because yeah. even in Ezekiel, it talks about a wheel within a wheel and this thing that flew. Yeah. I mean, Ezekiel, they, they, that's an Ezekiel. Okay? These things are a little weird. Mm -hmm. They know what a locust was. I mean, they had locusts back in the sure. days. Sure. Yeah. Okay? Look at Psalms 92.10. Wow. Psalm 92.10. Who wants to read it? I got it. Okay. But my horn shalt thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn, and I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My Bible says unicorns existed. That's right. Yep. Now, it didn't say it was a horse. With a, with a thing, it, it does have a, uh, the description talks about a horn, but it didn't say it was a horse. It, wasn't, it, it didn't rhino. I can tell you that, but the Bible says a unicorn existed. There it is. Right. I don't know what they were. The Bible doesn't give a real vague, vague description. Yes. Well, when the Bible talks about a horn, it talks about power, right? Right, power. It was strong. It had some kind of power. Right. Okay, but there's just some things that in your Bible that either you're going to take it as they stand or you're going to go because you don't like the word and change it. And that's, yeah. then that's then you then you then what you've done is you've taken this, yeah. you've put it aside, you went to another authority, and you now have decided what it means, so you become the final authority. Yeah, instead of God, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a problem. For me it is. You'll never hear me correct the word of God, Lord willing. Everybody with me so far? Yep. Genesis Amen. chapter six, start to see something. Yep. Why is this it's gonna lead up to something? Well, I keep saying that, but you gotta be patient with them. Now these angels are mentioned as well in the New Testament. Jude. Well, of course, there's only one chapter in Jude. Jude. One. Jude uh, 1 6. Jude 1 6. They are mentioned in the New Testament. Get there. Jude chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. And I'll read it to you. It goes, and the angels, here we go, which kept not their first estate, yep. but left their own habitation. What was their habitation? Heaven. 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 He hath reserved in everlasting change under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. That's a great way to throw judgment. Watch this. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and uh, going after what? Strange, strange flesh. flesh. When an angel procreates with a woman, that is strange, strange flesh. flesh. Yep. In the context, it's talking about these angels. Yep. And set forth an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. It's right there. Those are the angels in Genesis chapter 6. Mm -hmm. They went after strange flesh. That could be beasts. Right. Yeah, it could be the beast too, but it's 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 also to, but uh, uh, giving themselves over to fornication, you know. Um, so that would apply in the sense of, of, of a relationship between a man and a woman. But yeah. you could also say that as well. All right. But the point is, those are angels. They're reserved right now for what they did. Okay. Um, and they're waiting that judgment. Okay. Hmm. Now here we go. Go back to Genesis three fifteen. It all comes back to Genesis chapter 3. 15. 15. Oh, yeah. What's the whole point of this? Why is it so important? Does it matter the sons of God are angels? Does it matter the sons of God are Very important. Because someone's trying to do something to that messianic line. Right. Look at Genesis chapter 3. It's very important. Verse 15. Someone read it. And I will put enemy between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shall bruise his heel. Okay? Now there's two seeds going on there. See, if yep. the whole thing, if the devil, listen, if the devil can get in there and ruin that seed, that messianic line, he can take care of Christ not being around. Yep. You understand that? It's always been attacked. On that messianic line. That's the whole point of Genesis chapter 6. He wanted to corrupt the seed of man. Yep. You see that? Jesus Christ in John 8, 44, he said, Ye of your father, the devil. Because anybody who's not saved is of the devil. devil I don't care if it's your mom, it's your dad, it's your grandmother. Okay? They have Adam's image. It's, it's just not the right image. Okay? Now, there are three types of sons of God in the Bible. I'm just going to quote the script, uh, give you the verses. There are three types. Number one, Jesus, the only begotten Son of God. Hebrews 1.5. That's number one. 
We know that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God, right? We got that. Number two, born again believers. You're, you're a child of the King. You've been adopted in. Okay? Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 15. Romans what? 8, eight. eight 14 through 15. 15. Okay. And of course, angels, created beings. Luke chapter 3, verse 38. And that also includes Adam because he was created. And Luke 3.38 will tell you that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now when an angel falls, they cannot be redeemed. Right. Okay? Because and uh, they're, they're spirits. Hebrews 1.7, it talks that they are ministering spirits. They can take on the form of men. You've seen it in, uh, in, uh, in, in Lot's circumstance. Uh, you see it when uh, they're sitting on the tomb, Jesus' tomb. Uh, they, they, they can take on the form of, of flesh. Jesus Christ... Was God manifest in the what? Flesh. 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 They're spiritual. Jesus Christ died for mankind. Right, right. Only we can be redeemed. They can't. You go to First Peter chapter one, verse nine through twelve. They didn't even understand what salvation was. They didn't right. get it. They didn't get it. So those angels that you read of in Jude, that they have no, they cannot be redeemed. An angel. Once an angel falls, it's, fall, it's game it. over. Right. It's game over. Okay. First Peter. What was it? First Peter one, nine through twelve. Okay, here it comes. We're, we're, I'm actually I'm moving pretty good. Only better now we're changed. We might finish early. Here we go. Here we go, people. Hey. This is where it comes. This is where it all comes down to. You got to catch it now. Brain Stay with me. You may look at some more verses depending on what I didn't cover. <coughs> now, let me pull, let's, let's do this first. Oh, no. All right. So everybody got this right? Mm -hmm. Genesis one one. Yeah. That was the angelic host. They were they were in charge then. Genesis 1-2, Two. Satan is cast out, the world is destroyed, dinosaurs, the whole nine yards. Genesis 1-3, he starts to deal with mankind, Adam, or the recreation of the earth. The Bible says after its kind, something there was prior to that. Yep. Okay, now this is the new heaven and the new earth, that comes out over here. That's eternity future, we're not there yet. We're here, we're the restored earth. Okay, now remember, what's the Bible's main theme? Kingdom and kings. Kingdom. Kings and kingdom, right? <coughs> that image. Why is that image so important? Here we go. Here it is. Strap your boots on because we're about to take off. Okay? Here it is. We're going to go through the whole thing in a nutshell. Hopefully you'll see it. It's the summary of the sons of God. Okay, Why outside. it's important that you know what they are. Okay, from the very beginning, the sons of God were the first inhabitants on the earth. And Lucifer was their king. We read Job 38.7, right? Yes. We got that. We know that. The earth was exclusively Lucifer's. Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. He had a throne. He was in charge. We read right, that. Right, yes? Right, right. Okay? He was the head of the angelic population. He had a throne. Isaiah 14, 13. Yep. Lucifer, being filled with pride, tried to take over heaven. Right. God removed him from his position. Cast him out. Ezekiel chapter 28. Right? We've covered that. 13 through 19, right? Because of Lucifer's fall, the earth was destroyed. Yep. Genesis 1-2 and also uh, Jeremiah 4-23. Now some people use Jeremiah 4-23 as a future reference, which is fine. Now, now, what, now, because of that, because of the fall, guess what he created inside the earth? Hell. Hell. Look at Matthew 25-41. Mm -hmm. Okay? If people that go to hell, it wasn't created for that. No, no sir. The devil, Bible says in Matthew 25, 41, it says hell was created for the devil, devil and, and, and his, his angels. angels. His angel. It wasn't created for mankind. Nope. God, listen, God could have just wiped the devil out, but he said, that's too good for you, boy. I'm going to make you suffer forever for what you did. And then that day happens, it's going to happen. Look at Matthew 25, 41. Shot, read it. 25, 41. <clears throat> then shall he say also unto them, on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, everybody see that? Yeah. Okay, so he's cast out, we're out there, boom, Genesis 1-2, man, the void. Okay, Genesis 1-2-3, God restores the earth and re-inhabits it. can't see it, man. Adam, he's the new owner. He had to be a son of God. Go. Listen, God started with the angels. The angels blew it. Lucifer had control of the kingdoms. He was in charge of those kingdoms. He blew it. So God says, I want to start something new. I'm going to make a man. They're a little lesser than the angels, right? I'm going to start with something that's not as powerful as an angel. Because these guys kind of let me down. Yep. So he tells Adam, okay, Adam, 
You're going to be the new king. Yeah. Now, who do you think doesn't like that? Lucifer. You Lucifer. got it. You got it. He's not too happy. <laughs> Look at uh, Luke 3, 3.30. You have to turn there. But it says that uh, he 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 had the uh, he was a son of God. So he, once again, he's taken Lucifer's what? Position. Position yeah. Okay? Adam loses the kingdom of heaven with, guess whose help? Satan's, Satan's help. help. That's why in chapter 3, Satan comes in there. Watch that kingdom back. Yep. All right. Cut down. He's got to lose that image. Yeah. You with me? Yes, that son of God, God. image. Yeah. Because Adam sinned, the earth was cursed once again. Look at Genesis 3.17. God curses the earth again. again. Look at Genesis 3.17. Genesis 3.17. Somebody read it. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Okay? So guess what happens? He loses both kingdoms. Yep. Alright. He loses both he loses the, he lost God's image. That's the kingdom of, of God. God. He lost it. Okay. He lost having domain. He was supposed to rule. Guess who it went back to by default? Satan. 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 Guess who was the god of this world? Satan. Satan. Second Corinthians 4.4. 4, 4, yeah. he, so Adam blew it. Okay? Moving on. The next guy up to bat, and I'm not going to go through all of them for the sake of time. The next guy up to bat is Noah. Now remember what he told Adam? He told Adam to what? Replenish the earth. Replenish the, the earth. earth. Well, wait a minute. Why would he tell Adam to replenish? When there was no one there. There was nothing there beforehand. Something had to be there to restock, refill, okay? Mm -hmm. Noah was next in line to reestablish the kingdom. The earth was filled with wickedness. We're just in Genesis, guess what? Six. Six, six okay? Genesis 6 to 8, we read it. Noah was the only one that got, God found righteousness. Okay? After the flood, God gives Noah domain over this kingdom. Look at Genesis 9 1. Now he wants to establish it again with Noah. Adam blew it, okay? Now it's not the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is gone. Yeah. That doesn't show up until Jesus Christ because he's the only one that can restore the image. The kingdom of God is gone. It's not going to show up until Jesus Christ, guess what? Resurrects from the dead. 1 Peter 1 3. It's gone. That's, we're, not, we're talking about a physical kingdom now. That's all that can be left. And God wants to put man in charge of it. So you go to Genesis 9 1. Look what he says to uh, Noah. The same thing he said to Adam. Somebody read it. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful. And multiply and replenish the earth. Now, why would he tell them to replenish the earth? Because there was something there before. Right, because it was a whole, it was about probably 17 million people that just got killed, got wiped out yeah. right. because of the flood, the second flood. Okay. So Noah loses the kingdom because he gets drunk. Genesis chapter nine. Yeah. He blows it. Next guy up to bat is Abraham. Abraham gets the kingdom next. Look at Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. I'm leading up to something. Genesis chapter 12, 1 through 3. Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse them that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Okay? Everybody with me so far? Yeah. Think about sorry. this now. Let's, take, let's, let's walk back a little bit. The sons of God in the Old Testament in Genesis 6 are who? Angels. Angels. Okay? They blew it. Yeah. It was given to Adam, who was a son of God, right? Yeah. He blew, blew it. it. Noah now has got a little different. Okay? He's still got Adam's image. Yeah. So he, he can't get that kingdom of God. That's gone. He can't be born again. That's not going to happen yet. Right. But God wants to give him the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Physical kingdom. He gets drunk. Blows it. He blew it. Okay? So God wants to give it to somebody. Yeah. So now he's going to give it to a man called Abraham. Abraham gets it. You just read the verses. That Then that, that deed is transferred to Isaac. Right. Yeah, okay? Isaac. That's Genesis 17, 21. You don't have to read it. Okay? You read it in your own time. <coughs> All right? Then to Jacob, Genesis 28, 1 through 4. Jacob is called who? Israel. 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 Now look, look, look at Hosea 110. Read it quick. Hosea 110. Watch this. It gets crazy. Hosea, hang on. Hosea 110. 
Guess what comes into play again? Yeah. What's it say, Hosea 110? Read it. I know. Oh, I got it. Go ahead. Uh, ye, <clears throat> yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot uh, be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the, in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. Catch it? Yeah. Ye are the what of the living God? Sons. 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 See that? Sons of God again, as a nation. Yeah. As a nation. As a nation. Sons of the living God. The earth is their, inherit is their inheritance to the Jews, right? right? The devil, that's why the devil constantly attacks their seed. Do you see how that son of God, he's trying to get that image, that kingdom, is, it, it's going down through the generations. The devil is trying to attack it. He's trying to get in there and ruin it. Okay, God wants to keep the seed <coughs> from corruption. So God forbid them to marry outside of Israel. Okay, because yes. he didn't want them going horn after other gods. Right. Okay, he wanted that seed pure, and that would be in Deuteronomy seven, Deuteronomy seven one through three. You don't have to read that. Their seed was was polluted because of the advice of Balaam, which is in Numbers chapter twenty five one through three. So guess who blew it? Israel as a nation blew it. Blew it. Yeah. Okay. Everybody with me? Yep. Now we're gonna go just fast forward. There's a lot of stuff in there, a lot of kings, and prior to that. David, Solomon, and so forth. But we're going to the, to the main man. God sends Jesus, his only, guess what? He got, he got son. To take possession of the earth. Let's go to Matthew. We're going to do a little reading here. Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, verse 37. This is exactly what he's talking about here, which you've been you've been learning about for the past uh, hour, well, well, maybe an hour and a half. Okay, uh, verse twenty-seven. It says thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. Right, thirty-seven. Okay, thirty-seven. And we get there. Blah, 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 blah. But last of all, he sent to them his son, saying, "They will reverence my son." But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, "This is the heir." Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and what? Slew him. Now, who do you think he's talking about there? Jesus Christ. He's talking about himself with the Jews. Yeah. Because they didn't want the kingdom that he had to offer. No. They wanted to keep their kingdom. Yep. And, be, and God, so God sends his son, his only begotten son, to those people, thinking that they would have reverence, they want the kingdom. Yeah. Okay? So Jesus here was murdered by the caretakers mm -hmm. in, in hopes that they would be able to claim ownership. Jesus was God manifest in the flesh. If yeah. anyone receives, now watch this, anyone receives the only begotten Son as their Savior, guess what you become? Son of God. You, become, you see where all this, that Son of God stems from back when we were in Genesis chapter 6. Yeah. Before that, before the creation, that Son of God. Do you see that? Yep, yes, sir. That's, that's exciting. Amen. And when you make it Seth, you lose, all, you lose everything. Yeah. yeah. The devil, now watch this. The devil hates Christians because ultimately he hates yeah. Israel because that's where the Messiah comes from. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we know he hates them. Because the kingdom, yeah. Jesus Christ is going to set up the kingdom, the millennial reign. So he hates the Jews. That's why the tribulation he tries to kill as many as he can in the seven-year period. He hates Christians <coughs> because we become, listen, Lucifer. You know what Lucifer means? Light, Light bear. bear. He was a king, was he not? Yes, sir. Okay, now watch it. We become the sons of God. John 1.12. Look at John 1.12. Yeah. You accept Christ as your Savior, you become, you John are adopted in. You become a son of God. Now watch it. We're going to finish up here. Someone read it quick. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Okay, now wait a minute. Everybody look here. Here it comes. This, I'm about to finish with, with this main part. Okay, here it comes. We become what? Son of, son of, of God. God. Wait a minute. We are the light of the world. Right. Lucifer. Light bearer. Whoa. Whoa. We just took one of his positions. And guess what? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 12. If you suffer with him, you will reign, reign with, with him. him. That means you're a king. 
Yep. Amen. You're going to have Amen. possession of that kingdom. Yep. Why? Because you are a son of, of God. God. Made in his image. In his image. There you go. Amen. Wow. Woo. Amen. Amen. So don't tell me. It doesn't matter who the son of God is in Genesis chapter 6. Because it does matter. Yep. And the old perspective of history of where we're going to end up. Listen, if I'm not a son of God, I'm going to die and go to hell. Yeah, right. amen. And the devil has done everything he possibly could to destroy that. Yep. To destroy that seed. To destroy mankind. Yep. And listen, ladies and gentlemen, the jury, he wants to destroy you. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go out there and proclaim the gospel. gospel. Because he doesn't want other people getting out of this kingdom. Yep. We took the devil's job and position. We are told to go all the nations and preach the gospel. Matthew Amen. 28, 19. We are to be fruitful and multiply. multiply. Spiritually. Amen. That's yep. right. Spread the gospel. Right? To produce more sons of God. The devil doesn't want anyone to find out that they can have part of this inheritance. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Mm -hmm. That's why you have such a hard time talking to people about Jesus Christ. He has blinded their minds. And it's all stemming from being a son of God. Second Corinthians 4, 4, somebody read it, Sean. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Yeah, there it is. Now, I'll finish with this part here. He changes it in the New Bibles. The devil changes it. There very few Bibles have the title Son of God. Or sons of God. The K to King James Bible correctly translates it. Okay, listen. When you throw away your King James Bible, you're throwing away your inheritance. That's right. Because the devil has different contracts going on in the new Bibles. Doesn't want you to know about this. Doesn't want you to know about how important being a son of God is and where it came from. Do you see where it started? Yeah. You went from before time being a son of God with which were created beings to where you are now. You took a trip through history. I, I mean, I'm excited. I don't know about some of you. Some of you are looking at me and got hoot owls on God. But I'm man. just telling you, man, that you guys just went through a trip. <laughs> so when someone wow. says that the sons of God are a godly line, they're just men. Well, man, you just blew all that we just went over tonight. You yep. can't even get it. You can't. You just miss, go pack your bags and, and go on vacation, buddy, because you just missed the whole trip. Yep. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, go get an IV. Yeah. <laughs> go get that IV. Knock yourself out. Yeah. Okay. Everybody amen. with me? Everybody right. see that? Yep. Yeah. Amen. And that was a lot. Amen. Amen. We ain't done yet. Good. We ain't done yet. Keep going. I want to finish the dispensation. Preach. Okay. Okay. Take my notes. Uh, I mean, I got the seven judgments here. Did we go through seven judgments? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, okay. Where did we leave off? Yes. Uh, we're really low. Okay. Now we're going to talk about here after the flood. Now we're, we're done with the sons of God. Everybody got that? Okay. Yeah. We're back on the chart. Okay. Now we're here. We're talking about human government. Noah gets off the boat now. Yeah. Okay. He sets up an altar. Yeah. Okay. It rains now. Now it actually starts to rain. Of course, he experienced that. Genesis 9 3. Genesis 9 3. After turning there, man starts eating meat. He's told that at this point he can eat meat. Okay. Um. Now, man now governs man at this point. In other words, capital punishment is instituted. Genesis chapter 9, look at verses 5 and 6. So, the Bible is for capital punishment, by the way. Uh, you know, you got a bunch of people walking around. At one point in my, in my Christianity, I believe that you know, God would be against the death penalty, but that, that was wrong. God, God is for the death penalty. Well, George, the first time they killed somebody in 70 years, they put him... They didn't kill anybody. Well... Legal injection. He was executed because of the crimes that he did. He didn't kill anybody. No, you know, I'm talking you know, about. I'm just saying, but that's how the people want you to look, relate to it. I so know, I know. That's how they, they look at it. Genesis chapter 9, verses 5 and 6. Arthur. And surely your blood of I'm sorry. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man. At the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God may he man. There you go. Okay, and that's very important to God. So now God's instituting human government. Okay, he's, he's putting him in charge. Now one of the attributes of God is his justness. Um, 
Of course, it ends up with man turning their back on God. Uh, once again, it's sacrifices because of what Adam told them, yeah. but it's basically conscience. It's still conscience here. There is no law. Uh, yes. Okay. This is the. We also in Genesis chapter eleven, you have the first UN meeting. Okay, yeah, with the Tower of Babel. Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Bunch of you know, just and all that garbage with the UN and getting together, holding each other, hugging, kissing, and New you know, wanting order. to get in bed with the Pope and. Well, yeah. It's just a complete joke. Yeah. Listen, yeah. you get behind Israel. You forget about everything else, right. and you amen. get behind that Jew. Those are God's chosen people. Amen, amen and amen. Because amen. 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 anything outside of that is anti-Semitic. Right. And you, you're taking part with the devil. And the Pope has no love for Israel. No. no Popes no, no, don't. Yeah, but curse them, that curse thing. Yeah, the curse thing. All Popes okay. are anti-Semitic. How does it end? God confounds the language. Okay, because they're a mess. Now the dispensation of promise. This, of course, deals with Abraham. Okay, the dispensation of promise. Uh, it begins in Genesis 12. Yeah. Of course, goes up. It ends in Exodus chapter 19. Okay, because then the law is going about to be given. And we're going to go into the Mosaic law. It deals with uh, basically Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, Joseph gets in there a little bit as well. Uh, God has divided the world at this point into two categories. At this point, <coughs> up until here, it's been all. Guess what? Gentiles. 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 Okay. Now, because Abraham, who was a Gentile, is now going to become the, the, the leader of a nation, the Jewish nation. Now you have two different types. You have the Jews mm -hmm. and Gentiles. Gentiles. Here you have three. Jew, Gentile, church, church. and the church. church. First Corinthians 10, I think it's 32 or something to that effect. All right, you have three. All right. <coughs> now the Gentiles, once again, from here... All the way up to here are under conscience. They're not. They're not Jews. They don't have the law. Okay. <clears throat> now the. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay. At this point, salvation for the Jews is based on three things: circumcision, mm -hmm. because that was a token, a promise. Yeah. My wife did a real good study on that. You get a chance. Yeah. We we talked about that in the soul winning classes. Mm -hmm. He had to uh, keep to keep his conscience, uh, so to speak, mm -hmm. and um, also that once again from Adam they had some sacrifices, but the law has not been instituted until we get to here. All right, so we still don't have the law. Um, what happens? They end up going into Egypt. Uh, they stop. They stop the sacrifices. They weren't tithing, um, and uh, uh, they left the land. God told them not to leave the land, and they did. And the attribute here is God's faithfulness. Now, the dispensation of law, okay? This is last 1,500 years up until the cross. Now look at Romans chapter 8. Now the law wasn't the problem, it was mankind that's the problem. The law was given once again to show mankind that they couldn't keep it. Romans and they needed a Savior. Eight. Romans 8, said yes. Mm -hmm. Romans 8, verses 3 and 4. The duty of the law was to condemn us, Okay? That was our schoolmaster to show us that we were wrong, right. we were, were sinners, and we needed a savior. Unfortunately, some people look at the law as a standard of living that they can achieve, yeah. and they become self-righteous. Remember, we talked about that. They yeah. preached on it. Yes. it. It's you know, it's not based on you. It's based on him. Read uh, John chapter uh, uh, three, and you might get some of that. But look at Romans chapter eight. Look at verses three and four. Who wants me to form? What the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. God sending His own Son in the likeness of a sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Okay. What is the key to soul winning? What is the key? Uh, the, the, the law. law. Exactly. You need the law because you can't show a person that they're a sinner and they're lost, you can't save them. Right. The law shows them that they're wrong and they need a savior. Listen, up to here, what what the Jew, the Jew now has the law, and if yep. he can't keep the law, he has the sacrifices. Yep. Right. Now he has to keep the sacrifices because he knows he can't keep the law. Right. And guess what the sacrifice was? A perfect lamb. Yeah. Duh. Yeah. Right? Behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. world. You know, so without spot, so without blemish. Right? Yep. Amen. So that's what they had, that's the dispensation of law. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, in the Old Testament you could lose your salvation. You didn't keep the law. You didn't do the sacrifices. Read Ezekiel chapter 18 on your own time. A man could, he could lose and gain his salvation back and forth. 
There was no new birth. Testator hasn't died Testator yet. Testator hasn't died yet. You're still in the Old, old Testament. Testament under law. Okay. Now a person, Luke chapter 1, look at it, Luke chapter 1, a person could be blameless. But that doesn't mean they were perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, Luke chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Someone read it. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zechariah of the course of Abia. And his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blameless. Now everybody see that? Walking in all the ordinances. You see that? They had to keep the ordinances. Blameless. They weren't perfect. But if they did what God told them, that was fine. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you get up. Remember, we talked about Matthew chapter 19. Uh, the, the guy came up to Jesus and says, What must I do to have eternal life? What did Jesus Christ say? Keep okay. the commandments. Why? Testator hadn't died yet. That was the right advice. At that time, we don't do that today, do we? No. If we keep the commandments today, you're going to die and go to hell. Yep. Because the testator now has, has, has been in effect. Right. He's passed. Okay? And the attribute to God there is his sovereignty. Um, once again, it ends at the cross. Now, grace. Amen? Amen. amen. Yes. And amen. It is. This is you. This is the easiest time to get into the... Well, remember here. Watch this. Adam's here, right? Yep. Innocence. He loses... What kingdoms? Both, Both. Both kingdoms. Heaven, king, king, All right, but God wants to establish a heaven on earth, so to speak, and He so He gives it to all the men. Boom, boom. But the kingdom of God, that godly image, is nowhere to be found until you hit here. Yep. Right. He restores both. Now, what happens? Now, watch this. God's trying to get the physical kingdom here, right? Right. Now, watch. He offers it to the Jews. We have no king but Caesar. The kingdom of God comes in effect, and the kingdom of heaven goes up now. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the devil rules the governments, but he ain't king. Okay? So that's just the opposite. Now, we are in the age of grace. You can get now and restore that image that Adam lost. Yep. All right. Because memory times, the first Adam and the second, second Adam. Adam. Okay? So now we've restored that kingdom. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest time out of all these dispensations to go to heaven. Yep. You don't have to keep a law. Yep. You don't have to even worry about your conscience, so to no, speak. No. Okay, this is it, man. Any listen, any person who who, uh, who rejects <laughs> salvation now, hmm. okay, take your Bibles to Second Thessalonians. If a person you speaks to rejects the gospel, and the church is raptured up, we go up. That person will not get saved in the tribulation. They have no, when I say saved, I mean they're going to take the mark of the beast. They have no hope. So if you've got a mom and dad, and they're not saved, and the church goes up, and you've talked to them about Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. they are not going to, they are, they're going to take the mark of the beast, no question about it, when it goes through tribulation. Yeah. And they're going to die and go to hell. You don't believe that? Take your Bible to 2 Thessalonians. Let's look at it real quick. Right. Try to make time. Uh, what is it, 8 and 9? What is it? 2 Thessalonians 10. Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians yeah. chapter 2. Check. Yep. Wow. Two. Let's go back a little bit. Second Thessalonians chapter two. I will start. Uh, Eight. Let me start. I want to start. Uh, let's start in verse uh, seven. Hmm. Okay. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. In the words the 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 uh, Satan here. Right. Only he now. In the New King James and the other Bibles, I know for a fact in the New King James, they capitalize the word He. Okay, because they think it's the Holy Spirit. But it's not the Holy Spirit. Watch how you read this. Only He, the devil, who now letteth, will let until He be taken out of the way. The devil, yeah. Well, you know that, but most churches teach that when the Holy Spirit goes, when the church goes up, okay, when the church goes up, uh, excuse me, when the church goes up, the Holy Spirit is taken up with the church and there's no Holy Spirit. That is not true. No. When the church goes up, the Holy Spirit is still present on the earth. <clears throat> God is omnipresent. You yeah. are taking his omnipresence away. Yeah. Look at Revelation chapter 11. Hold your place here. But look at Revelation chapter 11. Verse 11, yeah. Okay? Yeah. And this is a tribulation passage and the Holy Spirit is still is still present in the tribulation. Revelation what? 11. Revelation 11. 11. 11. Yep, I got. Yep, and after three days and a half, the spirit of life 
from God entered into them. There it is. This is here, and I'm going to hit it tonight, Moses and Elijah. Amen. And I'm going to wow. prove it tonight that it's Moses and Elijah, and it's not Enoch. And they stood upon their feet, and great fear upon them, which showed them. But what's it say? And the spirit of what? Life. Capital S. That's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's in the tribulation. So when the church goes up, the Holy Spirit doesn't go up. Now, he works differently in the tribulation. Yes. Yeah, but he's still present. Right. Okay. Go back to 2 Thessalonians here. I want to read what we're at. Okay. Yeah. Now, once again, in the New King James, they capitalize the he. Yeah. But until he be taken out of the way, guess who takes a shot to the head and dies? The Antichrist. Yeah. That's talking about the Antichrist. Antichrist. It's not talking about the Holy Spirit. No. Look it. Then shall the wicked be revealed. The son of perdition now shows up. Yeah. It's not dealing with the Holy Spirit. No. <clears throat> That's why your King James has a small H, not a capital. Because they knew it was talking about the Antichrist. And when the wicked shall be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in that parish, watch this, because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be what? Saved. saved. So they didn't want the truth, so that they might be what? Saved. 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 For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And that they all might be what? Damned. Damned. <laughs> Who believe not the truth, but at pleasure and unrighteousness. It is. That's, that's talking about when the Antichrist shows up. Yep. They didn't want to accept the truth. They didn't want to get saved. And those people, when the church goes up and the Antichrist takes over, they will take the mark of the beast. God, God's going to give them a lie. He reversed it, right? That's what they want. That's what they, that's what they want. So you know family and friends that ain't going to get saved here? Yep. They ain't going to make it through here, buddy. No. I believe that Bible's true through thick and thin. Amen. All right. <laughs> But you gotta stop smoking. I know. Man. I give it up trying. Okay. Once again, Grace, uh, the woman at the well. Grace, the woman caught in adultery. Yeah. What should have happened to her? Yeah. Stone. Stone. But see, they never brought the guy. They never brought the guy with them. No. Right. Yeah. Okay. The Bible says it stoned them both. Yeah. It was probably one of them. Yeah. Okay. But that was Grace. You see. You see. Even though we are in the Old Testament in John chapter eight. Technically, technically, yeah. Yeah. his testament hadn't died yet. You see grace. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the thief on the cross. Grace type of it. That would, I mean, listen, the Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Spirit doesn't show up until 50 days later, Pentecost. Right. right. He said, today thou shalt be with yeah. me in paradise. We talked now about that. Paradise, All right? right. That's grace. That's grace. Right. Okay. Amen. <sighs> then, of course, you go into the book of Acts. Yeah. Uh, you know, a little transition here. Acts, once again, one of the trickiest books in the Bible. A lot of heresies come oh, out yeah. of the book Acts. A lot of heresies. A lot of wrong uh, Bible teaching. Because they're trying to put what was given to Israel on the Gentile. Yeah. You shouldn't do that. You must rightly divide. Amen. And uh, But we're not going to talk about that. It's a transitional book. It is not a doctrinal book per se. Okay? Um, it's 100% based on, guess what? Grace. 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 God's grace. grace. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 It ends, guess where? At the rapture. The rapture. Yep. And uh, we're getting there. Amen. We're, we're getting close. Um, now, man's responsibility is to trust God by faith. And right. very simply, but you, you try talking about it. All right? Because men do not accept the uh, uh, simplicity of salvation. Now, once again, we're up here. We are not going through the tribulation. Amen. No. Right. We are yeah. not going through the tribulation. Thank we are not appointed Amen. unto wrath. Amen. God did not save me from hell to put me through this nonsense no, here. Right. We are his bride. Yeah. What kind of husband would do that to his wife? That's right. Okay? Amen. It's not going to happen. Amen. Now, look at Revelation 7.14. Okay, they must endure to the end. It is not accepting Christ as your personal Savior in the tribulation. It's a different type of salvation. Remember, dispensations. Whatever God dispenses at that time. All right, look at 7, Revelation 7.14. I'll give you some verses. 7.14? Yes, Revelation 7.14. So we'll read it. Uh, 
And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, and he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. They washed their what? Robes. Robes. The washing works. And to wash their robes and after the tribulation. Look at Revelation chapter twelve. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter twelve. We're sticking Revelation, we don't go too far. Revelation chapter 10, uh, 12, verses 10 and 11. Revelation chapter 12, verses 10 and 11. They are not saved the same way you are. There is no spiritual circumcision in the tribulation. There is no born again in, in, in the tribulation. You must not take the mark of the beast, and you must endure to the end. That's why Matthew 24, 13, is, uh, I'll read it for you. Okay? Uh, I just want to read this passage of Scripture, because once again, when, was, when did the testator die? In Matthew, anybody tell me? Matthew 27. Matthew chapter 27. So when someone will go to this verse here, they'll go to Matthew 24, 13. It's, but, he that, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I don't have to endure anything. I'm saved. That's a tribulation passage. Right. Right. He that must endure the end shall be saved. To the end, right? Read Matthew 24. It talks about the tribulation. 24, 13. It talks about verse 3, the end of the world. It talks about um, uh, verse 14 in uh, uh, Matthew 20, 14 says, and then the end come. Verse 15 talks about the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel. That's a tribulation. Um, it talks about verse 21. It says, then shall the great tribulation. It's not dealing with the church age. Jesus Christ was talking about enduring to the end in the tribulation right, exactly. for that Jew. He has to endure he has to go, listen, the Jew and the world's going to go through it with them, have to go through tribulation. Why? Right there. They rejected the Messiah. Yep. And they have to realize, he. This they'll realize because the prince comes back on a white horse to save them. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He loves them. Then they'll accept him as the Messiah. They said here, let his blood be on us yep. and our children. Children, yep. That's right. And buddy, they've got it. Hitler, Spain, you name it, Rome, yeah. killing Jews. Yeah. Yeah. And they're all Roman Catholic. Rome, Caesar yeah. is our king. <laughs> yeah. Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 and 11. Someone read it. Arthur. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and in the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their wives unto the death. There you go. There That's how they had to endure to the end. Yep. They had to do. They had to believe Jesus Christ was God, no question about it. But they had to endure to the end. Look at yep. Revelation 12. Look at verse 17. <coughs> Arthur. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. That's Israel. Yes. Which keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. What they have to do? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. Have the testimony of Jesus. They had to endure. Revelation 14, 12. Come on, I'll give me enough verses. Yep. It ain't your salvation. 14, 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. There you go. Keep the commandments. Hey, you know, look at Revelation 14. Oh, give me the verses. Look at 9 and 10. You can lose your salvation if you take the mark of the beast. Faith and works and truth. I can't lose my salvation. I can put 666 all over my body. I might be demon possessed, but I can't lose my I can't lose my my salvation. <coughs> Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 through 10. I didn't do nothing to earn it. What makes you think I have to do something to keep it? Right. If God was going to be mad at me, he should have been mad at me before. Because I wasn't living for him. At least now I'm trying to live for him. Right, right. I'm a mess, granted, but still, I mean, why, if, if anything, I mean, why even give it to me? If I could lose it, it was up to me. You got a bunch of people, and you can lose your salvation because in you know, First John chapter nine, they don't know about spiritual circumcision. But I'm not going to go there tonight. Revelation, what I say? Fourteen. Nine, I got it. Nine, 14, ten. nine through ten. But good. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, "If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead hmm. or in his hand," verse ten, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. 
Okay? You take the mark, buddy. It's game over. And I told you what the devil's going to do here. He's going to switch these up. He's going to flip the switch. Yep. And you've got a bunch of preachers right now teaching that salvation's the same in every, in a, in every dispensation. Not I'm not joking. No. You know what's going to happen? Listen, you tell people about Jesus Christ, they will tell you, I have to work to get to heaven. 90% of religions will tell you they must get baptized, they have to do works, they have to do something in order to be saved. 90% of religions, yep, okay? You're right. Now when it comes here, okay, when it comes here, the devil's going to say, hey, maybe those Christians were right. Listen, accept Christ as your Savior and take the mark because you can't lose it. Look, look, look at what it says, 1 John 5.13. Yeah. Huh. He'll yeah. flip the script. Yep. Yeah. And you got a bunch of preachers telling people, yeah, salvation's the same in the tribulation. Yeah, it sure it is. Sure it is. No, it's not. What do you do with those verses? Come on, guys. Yep. Right, right. Devil, listen, devil's been at it 6,000 years dealing with mankind. He knows it. Outside the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the most powerful being in the universe. Amen. Yep. You ain't got a shot. Don't give me the old, he that is in me is better than he that is in the world. Blah, 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 blah. That's nonsense. All that verse means is that Jesus Christ is greater than the devil. That's right. Yeah. Amen. Doesn't That's mean, all that verse means. Doesn't mean you are. <laughs> I've heard preachers go up there, I'm going to take hell and the devil all with his court gun. Well, you just do that, son. <laughs> yeah. You just do that. And you see where you end up. Amen. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Give me a break, guys. Come on now. Isn't it, Amen. In, isn't it in uh, Revelation where it takes an angel to overthrow the devil and an angel overthrows 185,000 men? Syrian, yeah. And we can't even yeah. do two people. <laughs> Michael the archangel was afraid to contend with the devil in Jude yeah. for the body of Moses. Michael the archangel. And, then, and yeah. you got a bunch of preachers yeah. running around going to charge hell with a squirt gun? <laughs> First off, the devil's not even in hell. Right. No, no. Hasn't been there. No, to and fro, man. Yep. My goodness. Okay, everybody got that? You yep. see that? Now we're talking about the millennial dispensation. What happens? Church goes up, we come down, second coming of Christ. Now we establish his kingdom. It's a thousand year reign. It is not perfect. There's a rebellion at the end. The devil, yep. you can't blame the devil. You ever hear the expression, the devil made me do it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, your devil's not your only enemy. You got the world, the flesh, and the devil. Yep. Right? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. The devil's not, you can't even blame the devil here. He's in a pit for a thousand years. Right. So you yep. can't even blame Satan on this one. No. Okay? That's right. Uh, now I don't want to, but if you want to know about the Ezekiel chapter 36, write this down. We don't have time. It's almost quarter to nine. I've got to finish up. Ezekiel 36, 24 through 30. Okay? Now here, salvation, there's no faith involved because you see Jesus Christ on the throne. Right. But it is, for people that go through the millennium, it's a matter of works. You have to keep the commandments in the in the millennium. Now you guys, will be up. We're up, down. Now you're down. You're going to reign with him. Yeah, you are perfect. Right. You have taken on the new man, physically as well as spiritually. That's awesome. You will always do right and never do wrong. Amen. Don't don't ask me to explain it. I can't because I don't have that nature right now. You will always do what God wants you to do, and you'll enjoy doing it. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Great. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Amen. Your flesh right now is your worst enemy. Yep. It is the worst enemy you've got, but it's the one that most people cater to. That's right. Paul said, no, I'm not against, once again, take care of your bodies. I'm not saying, you know, don't exercise. I'm not saying it. But Paul said exercise profits a little. Yeah. Didn't say it didn't profit at all, but the problem is God's not worried about this. He's worried about this. Yep. <laughs> this is more important. Amen. New man, that mm -hmm. new man. Because the flesh, the Lord tells you, is hitting the dirt. Right. Yeah. Amen. It's going to rot away. That's okay. right. Yeah, new nature. Now, Revelation chapter 20, rebellion. You know, it's going to be rebellion. Revelation chapter 20, look at verse 7 through 10. It ends in rebellion because the devil is loosed for a season, probably a year. And then, of course, the army, Armageddon. Okay? Revelation chapter 20, look at verses 7 through 10. Someone want to read it for me, please. Arthur. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire of brim and brimstone, where the beast of the and the false prophet are and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever and ever. 
Okay? Yeah, amen. So this is a perfect. This is a perfect environment. It, it's 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 just like the Eden. Uh, animals, uh, it'd be cool to have a lion as, as a pet, right? Yeah, I love one. I believe animals are going to speak as well. <clears throat> I, mean, I, I believe that. I know, I know. You're thinking, that's crazy. Hey, didn't the ass talk to... Uh, yeah. yeah. Balaam? Balaam. 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 Right? Yeah, he spoke to him. Right? So I believe animals are going to be able to talk and just have a good old time with a lion, pet him, you know, All play right. with the kids. What a day that's... You know, that, that, I'm looking forward to that. Now, what happens after that? The Great White Throne Judgment. We've studied that. You guys know all about that. We've covered it. Amen. Okay? And then we go out to eternity future. Amen. That's where God inhabits the other planets. That's right. Because remember, the Jew gets the earth. We get New Jerusalem. Yeah. So that's you have the Jews covered. You have the church covered. What do you do to Gentiles? Yeah. They're going to inhabit the other planets. Remember Isaiah? We read it. They said he made those planets to be inhabited. Yeah. God doesn't make something just for they can look pretty. So so those planets will be inhabited. Don't let it change. Okay. Yeah. Ten more ten minutes and we're done. I want to talk about these two witnesses in Revelation chapter 11. Go to Revelation chapter 11. 11. Now these two witnesses, okay, they both appeared. I believe it's it's Moses and Elijah. Some people think it's Enoch. I do not believe it's Enoch. Okay, and I'm going to prove to you tonight why it's not Enoch. And you say, well, just gonna, well, you do what you want. You come up with a better argument. You let me know. Right. Matthew uh, chapter... Uh, 17. Let, let's 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 hold hold 11. Hold 11. Go to Matthew chapter 17. Look at verses 1 through 3. Now the reason why I ended up going here is because Arthur, of course, uh, being a complete jerk, <laughs> is that on a video? I take that back. He's not a jerk. <laughs> okay. He comes up with me and he goes. And I got to be honest with you. Uh, my wife helped me with this greatly. And he and the, and the, the question was. Uh, verse 27, this is what Arthur brought up to me. He goes, For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, then he shall reward every man according to his work. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste the death till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And then when you go into verse 17, okay, verse 17, I just want to read this for, for the text's sake, okay, Arthur, just we'll read it. And after, and after okay, that's going to be our crutch. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, what? and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into a high mountain. Apart. What, cha what chapter are you in? 17. 17. 17. We're on 17. Matthew 17, right? Yeah. Yeah. And was transfigured before them. Oh, I see it. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was yeah, yeah. white as the light. Yeah. And behold, there appeared unto him, who? Moses, Moses and, and Elias. Elijah. Elijah. That's Elijah. Right. Talking with him. This is on the Mount Transfiguration. This mm -hmm. is in his glorified state. Stay great. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now... Question was from Arthur. It says there are people standing here that shall not taste of death. Mm -hmm. So I went right into verse 17 and I said it's Moses and Elijah. There's a crutch there. This happened six days later. Mm -hmm. yeah. Jesus Christ is saying standing here as in the present tense. Right. That's right. Okay. Now we have to. Well, actually, it says after six days, which is probably seven. Right. Well. Okay. <laughs> Be quiet. Okay. Okay. I appreciate that. Okay. These Bible believers, tough crowd, tough crowd. Sorry. But the question was, I'm like, brother, I love you. you understand I know. That. Just you be quiet. <laughs> All right. It says, and after, it says, standing here shall not taste of death. Well, everybody died that was standing there, including Jesus Christ. That's right. Okay. We got a problem. Jesus made a mistake? No. 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 Never. Our Bible's got a mistake? No. no. Never. So, I went through the books. I went through the commentaries. Most commentaries will tell you it's Moses and Elijah. But you can't get past those six, seven days. Okay, you can't get past that. He was saying, talking about here, standing here. Well, let's go back a little bit. Okay? Go back to uh, where we have to be uh, in, in the same, in verse 16. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me, let's go back to uh, Revelation. You no, know, no, no. You're still in Matthew. You're still in Matthew. Let's go back to Matthew 16, 16. Yeah. Now watch this. Hang on, Matthew 16. Yeah, don't go to Revelation. Whoever said that, be quiet. Okay? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Right. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Son of by Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Right. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter upon this rock. Now, this rock, he's pointing at himself. Yes. Jesus Christ is the rock. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. He is the rock. The Peter 
means stone. Right. Mm -hmm. Cephas means stone. He's not the rock. Jesus <coughs> Christ is the rock. And I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind, and he goes on. Uh, then verse 21, from that, verse 21, from that time forth, he began to, uh, to show unto his disciples how he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and scribes and chief Pharisees and, and be killed and raised again the third day. He's talking about his death and resurrection. Now watch yeah. this. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, that this should be unto thee. Here is, here is a man rebuking God. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Now watch it. But he turned and said unto Peter, here's your first pope, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things be of God, but thou be of what? Men. 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 Then he goes on here about the second advent. He starts to talk. It. Now remember, all right, you have the disciples there, right? All right. Yeah. He turns around, he looks at Peter. He says, get thee behind me who? Satan. Satan. So who else is there? Satan. 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 Now watch it. Let's go back to verse 28. Verily, I say unto you, there be some standing here. Yeah. The disciples, and guess who else was there? Satan. Satan. There be some standing here which shall not taste of death till you see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. That's right. Yeah. Great white throne. He's cast into it like a fire. Satan has not died. That's the only, there's only two, there's only two possibilities. It's Moses and Elijah, which doesn't fit. Because it's after six days. It's after six days. Or he's talking to Satan. He was talking to him. Wow. Peter was there. Wow. You, listen, the devil was 24 hours a day, seven days a week on, on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. But I thought he was talking to the disciples because he's talking straight to them. And if you think about it, when he transfigures, it's a picture of his second coming. Right. So right. they actually do see it too. Right. Yes, but it's after six, th six days. Yeah, after, the seven day, after the fact. He's back. saying, standing he's here now. Here. And then he goes, then you got to go to the six days. Well, they're not standing there in six days. No. Peter, yes. Peter just got done saying, you know, thou art the Christ. You know, Peter's all good with this. You know what I'm saying? And all of a sudden, he he, rebu he rebukes the Lord. The devil's a person. The, he was the there. The devil was there. Him. You just read that the devil was there. The yeah. devil he was just there. rebuked Satan. Yeah. I, I see what Sean's saying, though, in that after six, um, on the Mount of Transfiguration, there are some that won't die until they see him in his glory, right? So he's in his glory when they see him. When they see him, Peter, as a picture of his second as coming. A type. Right, but they but, still, but he's but standing this is coming in here. His kingdom, not yeah, this here, is here. Yes, yeah. right. But Mark, it, we're the same. The, the I think it's parallel. I don't know. Um, nine one says there be some that stand here which shall not taste death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. Could we talk about the kingdom of God? Because a lot of them saw the kingdom of God. Or is that heaven? Kingdom of heaven. I, that's, second, that's second heaven. That's the physical kingdom. Yeah. Physical kingdom. <coughs> second heaven, right? Once again, once again, it could be one of the two possibilities. It could be Moses and Elijah, or it could be the devil. Yeah. I believe it's the devil. I, I, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. As I read it, if I read it in the context. Yeah, yeah, because saying, Moses and Elijah saying, wasn't. But he says some. The devil's only one person. I mean, you know. Some, the devil and his angels. There's other, there's other spiritual beings. Once again, it, it's you, you take it for what it's worth. Okay, so we got to move on. Okay, okay no yeah. more questions. No more questions. No, <laughs> not. Sorry, no more. I got to move on. I got to move on. Frank, hit me after. Okay, now I want to talk about these two men. Now, these two men here, who was on the Mount Transfiguration in, in, in his glorified state? Moses, Moses, and Moses and Elijah. Elijah. Okay. Um, <coughs> in Revelation, I'll give you the verses. We're not going to look at them, so I got to be done in three minutes. Revelation chapter 11, 4, and Zechariah 4, 3, they are described as olive trees. Mm -hmm. Both men are described as olive trees. Is that Revelation 11, 4, and four. Zechariah 4, 3. Okay? In Zechariah 4, 14, it says that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Moses and Elijah have been referenced as standing by the Lord. Okay? And, and 1 Kings 17, 1 is Elijah. And Exodus 34.5 is Moses.